aspire to a clean career, leaving no shame for descendants. Hello everyone. Welcome to Encountering Chinese, Case Stories, Cases Judged by Bao Gong. Today, I'm going to bring you a story called The Jade-Faced Cat. In Qinghe County, there was a scholar named Shi Jun, who had a wife named Hisaihua. Hisaihua was beautiful and skilled in needlework. One day, Shi Jun heard that there would be an imperial exam in the capital, so he bade farewell to his wife and set out for the city. He was accompanied by his young servant, Shower. They traveled day and night eating when hungry and drinking when thirsty. After several days of travel, they finally reached the foot of a mountain. By this time, it was getting late, so they sought lodging at an inn. The mountain stretched over 600 miles, connecting with Xijing on the other side. The valleys were deep, the cliffs were steep, and the area was rarely traversed by people. It was said that strange spirits and creatures often appeared there. In this mountain lived five rat demons. They had originally resided in the heavenly palace, but had recently come down to the human world. They were skilled in sorcery and could transform into different forms. Sometimes, these five rat demons would turn into elderly men to swindle travelers of their belongings. Other times, they would become beautiful women to seduce wealthy men, or handsome young men to deceive the daughters of rich families. The five rat demons were ranked by age, with the eldest named Rat 1 and the youngest named Rat 5. They lived under the clifftop cavern on the mountain. One day, Rat 5 was preparing to find someone to deceive. It transformed into the owner of an inn and went down the mountain to welcome guests. By chance, it encountered the scholar Shi Jun, who was traveling alone. Rat 5 inquired about his background and Shi Jun told it that he was on his way to the capital for the imperial examination. The rat demon secretly rejoiced upon hearing this. That evening, Rat 5 prepared food and wine to entertain Shi Jun and drank with him at the same table. During the meal, Shi Jun talked about historical events, and Rat 5 responded to everything fluently. Shi Jun was astonished and thought to himself, This person is just an innkeeper. How could he be so knowledgeable? So he asked, Are you familiar with the imperial examinations? Rat 5 laughed and said, To be honest, I went to the capital for the exam three or four years ago. Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to pass, so I gave up and settled here, running this small inn. The two drank late into the night, and Rat 5, with ill intentions, secretly blew a poisonous breath into Shi Jun's wine cup before handing it to him. As soon as Shi Jun drank the wine, he felt dizzy and collapsed at the table. The young servant, Shower, quickly helped Shi Jun to a guest room. But soon, Shi Jun was racked with intense stomach pain. Shower, being young, didn't know what to do, nor where to find a doctor. By morning, Shower realized that the innkeeper had disappeared, so he struggled to support Shi Jun as they continued on their way. After walking a few more miles, they reached another inn. The owner of this inn checked on Shi Jun and confirmed that he had been poisoned by a demon. At this time, 
The rat demon had already transformed into Shi Jun's appearance and returned to the Shi family. Shi Jun's wife, Hisaihua, was in her room dressing when she heard her husband had come home. She quickly went out to check and indeed saw her husband standing there, smiling warmly. Hisaihua asked, You left only twenty days ago, how have you returned so quickly? The rat demon replied, When I was near the capital, I met a fellow scholar who was also going there for the exam. He told me that the examination had already ended and all the candidates had left. Knowing it would be useless to go to the city, I decided to turn back and come home directly. Hisaihua then asked, Why didn't the servant, Shower, return with you? The rat demon answered, Shower is not familiar with the way. I entrusted our luggage to a friend who will bring it back, and Shower will come along with him. Hisaihua believed him and prepared breakfast for the demon, and their friends and relatives all thought the demon was indeed Shijun. From that day on, the rat demon stayed with Hisaihua day and night, while she remained unaware that the real Shijun was still suffering from demonic poison at the inn. Half a month later, Shi Jun finally received a remedy from Daoist priest Dong Jinren at the inn. After taking the medicine, he was completely cured. However, he learned that the examination had already ended, so he and Shaor headed back home. Due to his weakened state, Shi Jun could only travel slowly, and by the time he arrived, Twenty more days had passed. Shower entered the house first. At that moment, Hisaihua and the rat demon were drinking in the back hall. Hearing Shower had returned, Hisaihua rose and went to the front hall. She asked, Why have you returned so late? Shao helplessly replied, Please don't blame me for the delay. This journey nearly cost the master his life. Hisaihua asked, Which master are you talking about? Shao replied, Oh, of course. It was the master who went to the capital with me. Who else? Hisaihua, hearing this, laughed and said, I think you've been slacking off on the road. Your master came back twenty days ago. Shower was shocked and said, What are you talking about? I've been traveling day and night with my master, never leaving his side. How could he have come back first? Hisaihua, upon hearing this, was filled with doubt. At that moment, Shi Jun suddenly walked through the door. Upon seeing his wife, he embraced her and began to cry. Hearing the commotion, the rat demon entered the front hall and shouted, Who dares to harass my wife? Shi Jun, seeing the rat demon, was enraged and charged at it, but due to his weakened state, he was quickly driven out by the rat demon. The neighbors, hearing of the matter, were greatly astonished. With no other choice, Shi Jun sought refuge with his father-in-law and recounted the whole story. After listening, his father-in-law was deeply concerned and wrote a formal complaint, which he submitted to Prime Minister Wang. Upon reading the complaint, the Prime Minister was shocked and immediately ordered the constables to bring both the rat demon and his saihua to the court for questioning. In the courtroom, Prime Minister Wang saw before him two identical Shi Junes. The bailiff suggested that only Bao Gong could solve such a case, but unfortunately, he was still away at the border. 
Prime Minister Wang then called Hisaihua forward for a detailed inquiry. Hisaihua recounted the entire sequence of events. Prime Minister Wang asked, Do you know if your husband has any distinguishing marks on his body? Hisaihua replied, My husband has a black mole on his right arm. Prime Minister Wang first summoned the fake Shi Jun, ordering him to remove his shirt, and found that there was no black mole on his right arm. He then summoned the real Shi Jun, and sure enough, a black mole was present on his arm. The Prime Minister ordered the real Shi Jun to kneel on the left and the fake one to kneel on the right, instructing the constables to recheck the mole thinking this would reveal the truth. But when the constables examined them again, both men now had black moles on their right arms, making it impossible to tell who was real and who was fake. Prime Minister Wang exclaimed in shock. How strange! Just a moment ago, only one had a mole, and now both do. With no choice, he ordered both Shi Junes to be imprisoned, intending to resume the trial the following day. That night, the rat demon, filled with rage, used its magic to summon the other four rat demons to discuss how to resolve the situation. The next morning, Rat Four transformed into the likeness of Prime Minister Wang. It sat in the courtroom, questioning Shi Jun and the others, and severely punished the real Shi Jun Shi Jun, full of grief, cried out, his voice echoing through the heavens. At that moment, the real Prime Minister Wang arrived at the courtroom. Seeing another, Prime Minister Wang, seated above, he panicked and immediately ordered the constables to arrest the fake one. At the same time, the fake Prime Minister Wang shouted loudly, commanding the constables to arrest the real one. The courtroom descended into chaos, with the constables unable to tell who was real and who was fake, and none dared to act hastily. The two Prime Minister Wangs continued to argue, leaving the onlookers utterly dumbfounded. An experienced old bailiff stepped forward and said, Since it's hard to tell the real Prime Minister Wang from the fake one, arguing here won't resolve anything. Why don't you both go see Emperor Renzong? He might be able to solve this. When Emperor Renzong heard of the matter, he ordered both Prime Minister Wangs to come to the palace. As they presented themselves before him, the rat demon used its magic, releasing a puff of poisonous gas, making it impossible for the emperor to distinguish the real from the fake. Emperor Renzong had no choice but to order the two to be imprisoned in the imperial prison, planning to conduct the trial when the Big Dipper rose in the night sky. While the real and fake Prime Minister Wangs were locked in the prison, the rat demon, fearing its plot would be uncovered, cast a spell to summon the other three rat demons for discussion. The rat three, skilled in magic, transformed into Emperor Renzong and, before dawn, took control of the Chaoyuan Hall, summoning the officials to inquire about the case of Prime Minister Wang. By the time the real Emperor Renzong arrived at Chaoyuan Hall at dawn, the civil and military officials were already shocked to see two emperors. They immediately went to the rear hall to report the matter to Emperor Renzong's mother, the Empress Dowager. Hearing this, the Empress Dowager was greatly alarmed and quickly took her jade seal to the court intending to identify the real emperor. She said to the gathered officials, The real emperor Renzong has palm lines on his left hand resembling the characters for the mountain 
and a river, and on his right, lines resembling the characters for land and people. Verify these, and you'll know the truth. The officials inspected the emperor's palms, and sure enough, the real emperor Renzong's palms bore these markings. The Empress Dowager immediately issued an order to imprison the fake emperor in the heavenly prison for a thorough interrogation. Rat 3, realizing it had been exposed, panicked and once again used magic to summon Rat 1 and Rat 2 for counsel. Rat 2 said. Rat 3 transformed into the emperor, Rat 4 into Prime Minister Wang and Rat 5 into the fake Shijun. Now they're all locked up in the Imperial Prison. We have to rescue them. So, Rat 2 transformed into a fake Empress Dowager and headed to Chaoyuan Hall, intending to release its imprisoned companions. However, the real Empress Dowager had already issued an order to the jailers, strictly forbidding the release of any of the rat demons. The civil and military officials received two conflicting orders, one to release the prisoners and another to keep them detained, leaving them at a loss. Emperor Renzong became so distressed by the situation that he fell ill, unable to eat or sleep. The ministers advised. Your Majesty, you should send someone to the border to summon Bao Gong back to resolve this case. Emperor Renzong agreed with the minister's suggestion. He personally drafted an edict and dispatched an envoy to the border to bring Bao Gong back to the capital. Upon receiving the imperial decree, Bao Gong returned to the capital, paid his respects to Emperor Renzong and then withdrew to the Kaifeng Prefecture. There, he summoned his twenty-four subordinate constables and arranged various magical items to suppress demons in the hall. Bao Gong ordered that the two Prime Minister Wangs, the two Shi Junes, and the fake Emperor Renzong and the fake Empress Dowager be brought from the prison to the court at Kaifeng Prefecture. Standing before them, Bao Gong said with a smile. Although the true identities of Prime Minister Wang and Shi Jun have not yet been determined, it is clear from their behavior and characteristics that both the Empress Dowager and Emperor Renzong are fake. You will be held in the Kaifeng Prefecture Prison, and tomorrow I will perform a sacrificial ritual and report this matter to the city god before continuing the trial. The four rat demons, locked up together, exchanged uneasy glances and secretly discussed. If Bao Gong performs the ritual tomorrow, the city god will undoubtedly see through our true forms. If the gods become angered, we will never have a chance to escape. We must consult with Rat One. Upon hearing that Bao Gong planned to try the case, Rat One laughed disdainfully and said, I'll just transform into a fake Bao Gong and see how this real Bao Gong plans to handle the trial. So it disguised itself as Bao Gong and went to the main hall of the Kaifeng Prefecture to conduct the trial. Meanwhile, the real Bao Gong, who had just finished writing a report to present the case to the city god, suddenly heard that another, Bao Gong, was holding court in the main hall. Furious, he exclaimed. That wretched demon dares to be so audacious. He immediately rushed to the hall and ordered the constables to arrest the fake Bao Gong. Rat One stepped down from the bench and stood beside the real Bao Gong, making it impossible for the constables to distinguish between the two. Naturally, they were hesitant to act. Bao Gong, seething with rage, quickly instructed the constables. 
lock the doors immediately. Do not let this matter spread for now. I will come up with a solution. The constables obeyed. The real Bao Gong retreated to the rear hall, while the fake one continued presiding over the court. However, the constables remained puzzled, unsure whether to defy his orders or follow them. Returning to the real Bao Gong, he entered the inner hall and spoke to his wife, Li Shi. This case is truly difficult. I must report it to the Jade Emperor of the Heavenly Palace and ask for his help. Shortly, I will die. You must cover my body with a quilt and lay it on the bed. Do not move it at all. In two or three days at most, I will come back to life. Then, Bao Gong took out the poison hidden in his collar, chewed it a few times, and immediately fell onto the bed, lifeless, as his soul left his body and journeyed to the Heavenly Palace. The Heavenly Palace envoy escorted Bao Gong to see the Jade Emperor. After hearing Bao Gong's account of the case, the Jade Emperor ordered his heavenly officials to investigate the matter. The officials reported. The demons Bao Gong mentioned were originally five rate demons from the Western Thunderclap Monastery of the Buddha. They escaped to the human world and caused havoc. Upon learning this, the Jade Emperor prepared to send heavenly soldiers to capture the five rat demons. The official added. These demons possess great magical powers, and a small group of heavenly soldiers won't be able to subdue them. If we send a large force, they may flee to the sea, which could lead to even greater harm. We could go to the Thunderclap Monastery and request the jade-faced cat that guards Buddha's temple. It can surely defeat these rat demons. The Jade Emperor then dispatched the envoy to the Thunderclap Monastery to request the Jade-Faced Cat. Upon arriving, the envoy presented the Jade Emperor's decree to the Buddha. Buddha, understanding the situation, consulted with his disciples. One disciple, Master Yoguang, said to Buddha, Your Jade-Faced Cat cannot leave the temple. There are many scriptures in the hall, and without the cat, the rat might destroy them. Lending it out could cause great loss to you. The Buddha replied. But the Jade Emperor has asked for my help. How can I refuse? Yoguang suggested. You could lend out your golden-eyed lion instead. If the Jade Emperor doesn't know the full details, we can simply explain that the jade-faced cat must guard the scriptures. He won't blame you for it. Buddha agreed to the suggestion and gave the golden-eyed lion to the envoy. The heavenly official, upon seeing the lion, reported back to the Jade Emperor. Our star of literature, Bao Gong, came all the way to the heavenly palace, even sacrificing his life for the sake of the human world. How can we let his effort go in vain? Please, your majesty, show mercy to the people and allow Bao Gong to bring the jade-faced cat to the human world. Reluctantly, the jade emperor sent the envoy along with Bao Gong to the thunderclap monastery once again. They bowed before Buddha and humbly pleaded their case. Buddha felt conflicted. A monk stepped forward and advised. Bao Gong is an official in the human world and also the star of literature in the heavens. He has gone through great lengths to come here for the sake of the common people. You should make the protection of humanity your top priority and lend out the jade-faced cat. 
Buddha agreed with the reasoning and ordered his attendant to bring the jade-faced cat. The cat was small in size, and Bao Gong could easily hide it within his wide sleeves. Buddha also instructed the cat on the methods to capture the rat demons. Bao Gong, after receiving the cat, expressed his gratitude and left with the envoy. They returned to the Jade Emperor, informing him of their success. The Jade Emperor was overjoyed and ordered the heavenly official to give Bao Gong an antidote to cure the poison that had afflicted his body. Not long after, the envoy sent Bao Gong out of the heavenly palace. He suddenly woke up, finding himself still lying in bed. When he asked his wife about the time, he discovered that five days had already passed. Li Shi, his wife, was overjoyed to see her husband alive again and immediately brought him some soup to drink. Bao Gong recounted the entire ordeal to her and warned her not to reveal any of it to others. Li Shi then asked, What should we do next? Bao Gong privately told her. Tomorrow, you should go to the palace and meet the Empress Dowager. Ask her to choose a day and have a sacrificial platform built in the southern suburbs. Li Shi did as instructed. The next day, she took a sedan chair to the palace to report to the Empress Dowager, who granted her request. The Empress Dowager secretly ordered Di Qing to oversee the construction of the platform in the southern suburbs and sternly reminded him not to make any mistakes. Di Qing accepted the order and led his soldiers to build the platform. Meanwhile, at the prefecture office, Bao Gong instructed all his constables to bring everyone involved to the platform on the designated day. The military and civilians in the capital heard about this event and gathered to witness it. On that day, the real Emperor Renzong, the false Emperor Renzong, the real Empress Dowager, the false Empress Dowager, the two Prime Minister Wangs, the two Shi Junes, and the false Bao Gong all stood beneath the platform. The civil and military officials were lined up on either side. Bao Gong ascended the platform and took his seat while the false Bao Gong continued to argue with him from below. As noon approached, Bao Gong took out the scriptures given to him by the Buddha and began to recite them. The jade-faced cat, hidden in his sleeve, stretched out a paw and then leaped out. Instantly, the cat grew to the size of a fierce tiger with eyes gleaming like gold. It jumped off the platform and bit the false Emperor Renzong. Seeing this, the false Empress Dowager revealed her true form and tried to flee. The jade-faced cat extended its left paw and captured her as well. One by one, the rat demons revealed their true forms. The cat used its right paw to seize Rat One. The crowd below the platform cheered in support of the jade-faced cat upon seeing the scene. Rat Four saw the situation and quickly tried to escape, but the cat wasn't about to let it go. In an instant, the cat transformed into a beam of golden light and pursued it. The crowd erupted in cheers. Bao Gong descended from the platform and saw the four captured rat demons, each more than three meters long, seemingly dead from the cat's bites. Bao Gong loudly declared, These monsters strengthened themselves by taking human lives. Soldiers, you may boil and eat them to strengthen your bodies. Emperor Renzong, Relieved that the case had finally been resolved, ordered the court historians to record this strange case. 
Bao Gong also released the real Shi Jun, allowing him to reunite with his wife, Hisaihua. However, she had also been poisoned by the rat demon, and it took a long time for her to fully recover. Later, Shi Jun participated in the imperial examinations again, this time successfully becoming a Jin Shi and taking up an official position in the Ministry of Personnel. He and Hisaihua had two sons, who grew up to become quite famous. All right. Today's case story, The Jade-Faced Cat, concludes here. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave your comments and share with others. See you again in the next issue.